because when you get o- that, when but... when you get over the hill mm-hmm. and you start going down as you speed up. <laughs> oh, he's holding on to this over the hill thing. I feel like you have this tone of like you're making like a like uh what's the word like you're like confess like a confession. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 21 of 21. the Glued Together podcast. We are so happy you're here. We're going to start today's episode with a deep breath. I was actually just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't set the tone yeah. of today's episode, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what would. Mm-hmm. Okay. Take a deep breath in. I always They always do it like really fancy, but it's just like, just take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Just, you know. Just some ASMR here. <sighs> I try to like just let my whole body melt. So today. So if you pause, like if you if you pause like right after the inhale and like hold it, it's the holding it that actually calms your nervous system. Like mm. holding it for as oh, long as you can and then releasing it actually sends a signal to your nervous system. Okay, let me try that. I just counted to four. So, today's episode, I feel like is organically all about annoyance (laughs) and some anger that comes with annoyance. Mm -hmm. Communication. Mm. Uh, all of those things. As yes. you can see, we have a slightly different setup. Trying a new mic formation for myself because mm-hmm. my back was just like too much. Jane Lee's trying a new formation. Yeah, because at least once an episode, I like hit myself in the face yes. with the mic, and, and my sure back was hurting. Entertaining, but not so fun. the other thing here. So, so where did we get here? Why are we angry? Or I wouldn't even say I'm angry. I'm like, f- I'm immensely frustrated mm-hmm. is that the mm-hmm. like frustrated annoyed mm. feels like a good word mm-hmm. just we just spent <laughs> 15 20 minutes trying to figure things out because we were hooking up Jane Lee's mic and he, her computer was full there was no more storage we tried to fix put videos onto sd cards and those were all full and just super annoying. Mm-hmm. So I had to pull out my work laptop, which I really like to separate my work <laughs> from things. So I'm like, okay, I guess this is happening. I'm slightly annoyed. I didn't think of it sooner, but whatever, we got there. And now, like, it's black, which is going to freak me out that it's not recording anymore. Should I so just touch it. touch it. Now you're going to have to really What's happening? tap it. Hit a button. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You're still recording? Yes. Okay. It's still recording. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the lighting was annoying me. Just like once you get annoyed, everything is super fucking annoying. Yeah. And, you know, it's like our communication is pretty tight, but like every now and again, we'd like drop the ball in some way and it creates like this like ripple effect. Um, I feel like so, things are always changing, yeah. right? And I okay, so like communication can be only will never be a hundred percent, right? Ever, always a work in progress, right? And yeah. we tried to be at a hundred, and I feel like we would just get into arguments about how we're never going to be at a hundred, <laughs> <laughs> which didn't help. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I just feel like as a reminder to everyone, like you can try as hard as you can try, and you can do as best as you can do. And your communication is not going to be perfect because things mm-hmm. are constantly changing. Mm-hmm. Situations are constantly changing mm-hmm. that cannot always be communicated in the exact moment that the change occurs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So I'll speak to where I'm coming from this morning, um, which was I have been wanting to prioritize getting together with a friend of mine who is I feel like you have this tone of like you're making like a like uh what's the word like you're like confess like a confession 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and so like, like this is why I'm feels, annoyed. <laughs> well, I feel, yeah. Well, I feel like me like showing up later than you needed me then to show we up. communicated yes <laughs> it kind of um created the foundation of frustration the found <laughs> the foundation of frustration <laughs> what's your foundation yes i would say that's my i think that there's actually another found like there's another layer there mm -hmm. but keep going so my friend is going away for the month of February and it's possible that she's also going to be moving away. Um, and so I just have like a lot of anticipatory grief around my friendship with her and the way that it's been because we've um, been really close since I moved here to New York and we've spent a lot of in-person time together and she's someone that I can like talk my spiritual talk to and usually we get together and it's like hours go by and nobody realizes it and so <laughs> I know Aiden knows that and like he reminded me that oh so you're last getting night oh so you're getting together with that friend and are you sure that like an hour is going to be enough <laughs> so because... part of our communication is like looking yeah. at our schedules the mm -hmm. night before Yes. Right. And being mm -hmm. like, this is what's going on for me. This is what's going on for you. This is what mm -hmm. we're doing together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And so I was just like, I'm like, these girls will get together for a day. Oh, the whole day. Like, well, they'll get together for coffee and then have breakfast, lunch and dinner together and then get home late. You Possibly. Know what I mean? Yeah. That, like, and, and, and that's the tr that's true. So I just thought an hour is, feels impossible. Yeah. I mean, it's fair that you had those feelings um we both had said like she couldn't really stay later than i could either but and we both like and and everything was fine and and i was like yeah like all right so i have like five minutes left and then like we go off to a new tangent and like leave the earth together um <laughs> but to be fair like i did get here before 11 it just was not far enough before 11 especially with everything else we had to deal with that we didn't I think even it was realize. 10 56 <laughs> So and like yes, <laughs> you did get here before eleven. Yeah. So. But we're supposed to click record at eleven. Yeah. I mean, I I just yeah. I guess I just have to own that. Like I'm emotionally messy in this relationship with her right now, and like I just I really wanted to spend more time, and I'm like also grateful that like I was able to spend this time before she leaves. So mm -hmm. all things are true, and this podcast is really important to me, and I really wanted to make this happen too. So like. I'm just being challenged to step into this higher version of myself, which is like somebody that can manage time really well. Mm. And yeah, I just feel a lot of things and yeah. And it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I got annoyed and, you know, mm -hmm. but it's fine, you know? Um, and I, I did, I texted genuinely. I was like, you know, how's it going? Cause it was like 10, 40 yeah and you weren't like, here and i I'm was like, like how's it going like i <laughs> i was like i have some work to do like maybe maybe this isn't a good time like i could definitely take this time to get ready for my meeting i have but you have a full schedule tomorrow so it didn't make sense um and i always we always regret when we push off the, the podcast the pod yeah. uh, anything when we push anything yeah. off that we're like we're gonna do this thing yeah. and then we push it off we're like this is crazy mm. so Thank you all for being here because I feel like even just mm -hmm. as we get in into the podcast, mm -hmm. I always feel a little bit better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah so. Thank you. Um, so Jenny Lee and I this past week have started and have finished our wills and our living wills. We have to get them notarized, which we did go to get them, but we need more witnesses because mm -hmm. apparently, for those of you who don't have a will, which I don't know a lot of people who do, to be mm -hmm. honest, um, you have to have a witness that isn't in your will. Two witnesses. Two, yeah, well, two witnesses, <laughs> yeah. but just in general, yeah. which makes sense because, you know, mm -hmm. then you, don't, you can't be like, sign me all over all your stuff and then, mm -hmm. you know, right. take advantage of someone. Yeah. Um, but I feel very adult in that. Yeah. I don't yeah. really have many assets. Yeah. But, you know, 
if I die, you can have all my things. You don't have to fight anyone for it. You don't have to go to a lawyer or a judge, you know? Yeah, yeah no, there's there's definitely um, a maturing happening to us together. Yeah. And it's really cool. It's scary. And it's a lot of work. And it's taking a lot of consistency and taking consistent steps mm -hmm. and holding ourselves and each other accountable. But... We are doing the big girl and big boy things together. Our big, <laughs> big kid pants on. Big kid pants on. We're adulting. Yeah. But also, you're turning 40 this year. Yes. And that has been hitting you, but it's also been hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> I said in the car. I think it's yes, hitting you more than me. I, don't, I mean, maybe right now. Because I think in my head, I just thought like, wow, Jane Lee's turning 40. I'm going to be married to a 40-year-old. And just like when you tell that, like if you talk to an 18 year old and you say, oh, they're 40, they're like, oh, shit. Even if you talk to a 25 year old, you're like, oh, well, when I'm 40, I'll be blah, blah, blah. And here we are. And I, I still feel like I could talk to a 25 year old and be like, what's uh, good? Like, I don't sure. feel 40. Right. I feel like that's what people say. When they're 40 and 50, they're like, well, I don't feel 50. Mm -hmm. Isn't 40 over the hill? I don't see it that way. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> I know that's not how you see it. But isn't that like if we went into the party city today, 40 would be over the hill? I wouldn't purchase that. I know you wouldn't. We all we understand that's not how you view it, but right, I'm just but saying I'm not, is is that or is that not the saying? I wouldn't know. I'm not engaging with that you narrative. I, to me, it's like I have reached the top of some sort of hill and I get to <laughs> slay down slay ride down it because I 40 is over the hill, baby that's what it is it's not i'm just it's a, it maybe it's an old saying maybe people don't say it anymore but i'm just thinking about how we talk about 40 you know not and how you talk about 40 <laughs> i'm not talking about 40 in any such way i have i am like wine you know like you are a fine <laughs> that's what oh that's what 40 year olds say about being 40 i'm just aged wine the point I'm trying to make is that when, you know, 40 is, they say like over the hill, mm -hmm. all of these things, but it's interesting because the more and more you, we talk to people old, a little bit older than us, even in their mid forties, they feel like they just got a hold of themselves. Like they feel like they just got their shit together. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, I'm 36 turning 37 you're 39 turning 40 we know people a little younger than us we know people our age a little bit older i mean mm -hmm. we know all yeah. i would say within like people. 10 years yeah. you know we know people you know five years younger or five years older type of thing we know people is that what you just said <laughs> we know we we know people <laughs> we do i mean when you really think of, <laughs> of course we the do. when you think of the spectrum of our friends and even yeah, friends, it is we a don't, wide, even friends we don't we're not in contact with anymore it's or like a wide range that, that friends that we've ever had in our existence of being together, we have a wide Yeah, we have old ass friends too that we like. Younger friends and older sure. friends and like Isn't Mary like ten years younger than you? Yeah. 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 So mm. it's interesting though because people say they find themselves themselves like as they get older. And I don't know if that's a, a societal thing. I don't know if that's inflation mm -hmm. housing market student loan debt career <laughs> opportunities i mean i think that that's what it is mm -hmm. I, it's also thinking about how little amount of people we know that have kids mm -hmm. and most yep. people we know that have kids don't have more than one mm. more than 50 percent of all the kids kids all the people we know that have kids don't have more than one kid mm -hmm. and really don't allude to being like we have got three more to go right they, like mm -hmm. some of them are know they want to have two but that's it like, yeah yeah well i like you know like even my brother i remember he always wanted five kids that's why and but like he had two, two. and he's, he's like, like i'm good, good. 
<laughs> and it's because we live in a different world. We live in a different age. Like whenever that seed was planted within him was when, you know, it was like, oh, it was normal to have four or five kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, or like that was the example. I feel of... like growing up three was very common. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Everyone I knew my, was my one of three. My family was three kids. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of three. And then you'd have someone who had four and you're like, wow, four. But yeah. it wasn't like, whoa. I think now if you talk, like if I met someone who had five kids, I don't know what I would do. I would like, I, I'm, I would just be surprised they're not sleeping. Right. Well, that's why like even that show we checked out, um, My Life with the Walter Boys with like right. 11 kids, which is wild to that's imagine. Wild. That's you know? wild. It seems easier I mean, when they're older because yeah. they're mm -hmm. more highly functioning. Yeah. But when they're young, yeah. like if you want to have five kids out there, go for it, do it, and... I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you do you. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to be you. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so getting older, adulting, mm -hmm. wills, right? That's how you know you're getting old when you got a will in place. We're getting life insurance. All of these things are happening. We can't wait to share you mo share more with y'all about like that process and stuff. Yeah, um, our which, financial journey. Yeah, yeah, which we will definitely in a future episode. Mm -hmm. And also just Antler's getting older too. Yes. It's really crazy that yeah. he's five and that before we know it, he's going to be six. Like the time is what's that saying every day feels like a year and every year feels like a day or, or whatever that is yeah the 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 days are long but the years are short that's it yeah and that's that's true it's yeah. so true it's so true but time is flying time is really picked up um and i have a whole astrological that's because when you get o that, when, but... when you get over the hill mm -hmm. and you start going down as you speed up Oh, he's holding on to this over the hill thing. Let me tell you something. At my 40th celebration, there better not be any jokes or hints at any of that hill narrative okay. because I'm not. I'm not going to make any jokes, but it. I'm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rent out a, a fancy place in a winery right on the top of the hill. Yeah, I don't mind that. <laughs> that actually sounds really nice. Okay, there we go. That'll be <laughs> my like views. my only joke, and my it, only it's inside the joke. The symbolism of being at the top of the hill is like you have a more wise perspective. Is that you what can it is? See more. Well, for me, I don't know if that's what it is right. for people. I'm only speaking to my own personal perspective. Oh, I think I know that, and everyone listening knows that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're denying that was like a perfect like sitting on a jury like you know be like mm. so is over the hill 40 or not i would not know <laughs> I, I i i don't live in that perspective so I, i'm unsure if that's the answer <laughs> yes i refer to the two grays in my bangs as my you wisdom do. wands your what my wisdom wands your wisdom wands i love it what about when you lose your hair what are all my loss of hair is that my I'm losing it? My well, my wisdom scalp? I so I've told my you my wisdom head. So I've told you that you definitely could benefit from a different perspective on your hair loss. So well you, well let's do it. As I lose my hair, <laughs> what is this perspective? Am I is it a clean slate? I like that. Okay. <laughs> is it smooth sailing? Just thinking of bald heads here. Smooth sailing? Is it? I like that. Am I? Is it the loss of hair and the loss of? I'm shed. I'm shedding my oldness. Mm -hmm. Rebirth. Free from attachments. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one. Oh, yeah, like people be like, oh, Aiden, it looks like you have a receding hairline. Are you kidding? I am getting freed from the attachments. All all the hair that's growing up, it's just a, it's just a, a leech. Just <laughs> a leech? I don't know. They like attach to your skin. Yeah. That's what I think of like yeah. ripping them off. Yeah. Maybe dramatic. Wow. Yeah. Well, the amount of ads I get served. I told you. <laughs> I showed Jaylee and my mom a toupee. <laughs> A toupee Instagram account. 
Yeah. Toupe, and, shout out to Toupe Queen. To show me. Shout out. To show me and your mom anything at the same time is a Two very. Two wildly different perspectives. Right, right. It's and, and I think that's comical. why you do it. It's comical. <laughs> it's... But yo, those two pays look legit. Because I wish I had the they're money. they're glued on. I wish I had the money, but they look so good. <laughs> Get a fade. Yes. You know? Yes. If I had the money, I would find a, you know, a green type of, you know, like a natural adhesive to suck, suck to my skin. Wouldn't feel good coming off, I don't think. No, she uses like a thing. Okay. All right. Anybody who's interested, go to Toupee Queen on Instagram. It's legit. You don't understand because you're not losing your hair. Okay. You don't understand. Okay. It's hard. It's hard. And then I also, what else did I say? Oh, I was like looking at different versions of Rogaine. I have like a, I have a really hard, my hair has always been my thing. Before transition, like I've just always had good hair. Sexy cool, hair. There you go. Fun hair, <laughs> right? Like, and I just, something, like I look around and I'm like, every guy, it feels like more than 50% of men no have no hair. Everyone's bald these days. Maybe just because I'm getting older. I'm approaching my hill. I can see the top of my hill. And I'm just like, everyone's fucking bald. And I don't want to be bald, man. I don't. I just want to. I don't. I just want to remind you that we were on a time schedule today with our recording. And you're talking a lot about toupees. Can we return? <laughs> can we go back in time and calculate all the minutes in which we've spent on your boot journey? <laughs> Can we do that? Can we go back in time? You know, I've talked about these boots already. I- exactly. Thank you, you. These are the ones. Fifty nine percent. We have we have stats now on our podcast, which is cool. Because I it's might Spotify. have run out of boots to talk about, which is it's not problem. a problem. Fifty nine percent of all of our people are men. Identify as men. Oh, okay. Yeah, you you have like stats. Yeah, we now. have stats now. At like, least our Spotify listeners. Spotify is pretty so fifty nine percent of people like it. Probably the other 41% are laughing because they're <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. Everyone's fucking bald. <laughs> you know? So So what's your glue this week? Is it to the my glue toupee. of your toupee? The, the glue of my future toupee. Yeah. They look dope. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. If I had a connection, yeah, I'd be hitting it up. Oh, man. Don't say that too loud. I'll say s- that off, off the mic. I'm going to go on the hill and scream it out <laughs> I want to get that toupee. Okay. Uh, my glue. I don't know if I have glue. I've just, just been <laughs> falling apart. Just been falling apart. I'm Absolutely actively, no glue. Actively falling apart. There's no glue. <laughs> the glue's next week. This week is the fall. Is the falling apart week. Um, no, really. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think I know your glue this week if you don't have any. I yeah, could, let I me know. I give you a little something. Getting over my, like, I'm using comedy to overcome my annoyance and anger. So, which I'm feeling better. Good look for you. A bald look. (laughs) That's very bold, bald of you. Go ahead. What's my glue? Top golf. Yeah, you think so? You came home in a great mood. Because it snowed. Maybe that's so why. Snow. All right, go ahead. Stop. I mean, not that Top Golf wasn't fun. My mm-hmm. brother took me to Top Golf on Tuesday night, which was fun. But it snowed and it was like, whoosh, and we were up on the third, and the lights were going. It was definitely fun. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it wasn't fun. Um, but oh, I think my glue was I had a lot of fun at uh, the football party. We had a little mini football party. We have two other couple friends that we invited over, and we watched the Chiefs win. Um, oh right! Shout out to Taylor's team. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably my other glue mm-hmm. is just like vance and i just like going deep in the taylor stuff we're just like sending each other memes you know what i mean about like taylor and kelsey and it's just it's 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 funny because i know a lot but not because i'm like oh i want to know a lot it's right. because it's really funny to send him memes mm-hmm. so i if you like save a meme or you send it to someone it'll show you more of that subject because mm-hmm. the algorithm is like oh aiden wants to know about travis and kelsey i mean uh taylor and travis so because he just sent three memes to vance like you know what I mean? 
So I feel like I know too much. I know a lot. I know yes. a lot of things. Yes. But yeah. But I think that that like that was fun. I felt like that was a, a good time and you know. So I don't know. Again, not necessarily like one particular glue, but there was a couple of little things that felt good for this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you? My glue uh, was definitely like taking action on figuring out what's going on with my body, um, making a muscle testing appointment um, that was really good for me and deciding what I actually want for my 40th birthday. Too close. Oh, okay. You're just like you're talking okay. <laughs> super into the mic and I feel like when I edit this, it's going to be like popping. Yeah. Um, I decided what I wanted for my 40th birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And um, I won't share it yet, but... It's a secret. We did a little dance party after that. Um, and from, I had trouble getting into that dance party, but I got there eventually. Yeah. So the dance party really set me free. And I feel like it was like I just released a lot of old stuff and it felt really good. Um, and Antler started break dancing. Yes. And that was just so fun to like witness him like discovering something that he likes to do. And uh, we ended up like showing him videos of kids break dancing. So he like felt even more inspired and we signed him up for a class. And so he's just like has this like new And he interest. said he had fun and yeah. then he wanted to do it again. Yeah. He has this new interest. Um, That's not and, pushed on by us. Yeah. Like we didn't come up with it. We didn't say, hey, do you want to do this? He right. kind of just started naturally doing it. And then we were like, oh, you, you should see these people do it. And so like we're just like nurturing this thing that he's interested in. And that feels really good. Yeah. Because that's something that is important to us, I think, as parents is really just kind of taking note what he's organically interested in and then right. nurturing that and like giving him opportunities to like do those things. And so, yeah, we'll see what happens. But it's it's actually just it's really fun cute. and cute. And yeah, I couldn't have guessed that. Could be a B-boy. <laughs> yeah, That's what I knows. was thinking about. So, so, yeah, just just little things like that. But yeah, um, excited for my 40th i i feel really positive about it i don't feel in any way like dreading it which i know is the experience of a lot of people so no it's gonna be fun yeah it's gonna be fun mm -hmm. up on that hill so i have my phone again for questions just it's actually Jay Lee's phone because my phone is recording and I couldn't get the, yeah. that's another annoying thing. I couldn't yeah. get the, it's, it's just We a had lot to of manipulate things. some technology this morning. Lots of annoying <laughs> things. Um, so the first question I'm actually going to ask because it's kind of a quicker one. It says, has Antler accidentally told anyone you are trans? Hmm. It's something I've thought about a lot hmm. of like, what if Antler was just one day in class is like, my daddy is, was, was a girl and now he's a boy. Because mm -hmm. he's going to say it like that. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be like, this is weird. He's just going to be like, oh, like, yeah. oh, well, my daddy was a girl. Mm -hmm. And people are be like, well, hmm? well. Mm -hmm. uh, another reason that having him in a school that they know that I'm trans mm -hmm. and they know that yeah. and we feel safe telling them and we feel like the teacher will respond accordingly even if the teacher is like oh yeah and that's it like i'd rather have that mm -hmm. than what what do you mean well what well oh that what are you saying like and really not understanding what antler's going through even on even understanding just on a baseline level of like this child mm -hmm. is comes from a queer family and one of their parents is transgender yeah that's important yeah. for him to know mm -hmm. in the school that he's going to be potentially staying in for the next five maybe six years depending on if he goes back to kindergarten and stuff like that so mm -hmm. so he hasn't yet and we'll see what happens i guess <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah just like the potential for him to experience being othered for the first time through that, like, because depending right. on how people respond to him, because he's like you said, he would say it innocently like this is there's no weirdness to this. There's no otherness to this. This is just something that is 
a detail about my dad. Right. You know? Exactly. And like, so yeah, just like knowing that, yeah, like we can't, we couldn't be there. We wouldn't be able to be there in that moment to even like attempt to facilitate that conversation. Like right. that's, um, well, and he could say it to just his friends when there's no one else around. Mm-hmm. He could just say it when his little friends are all hanging out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very possible he's um, pretty outspoken. So yeah, could have said it already, but not to my knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I've got Jane Lee's phone. Do you know the passcode to your partner's phone? <laughs> I always think that's like a, some people are like, fuck no. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, I honestly like, I always think about like taking the passcode off of my phone. So I'm like, why? You can. I, you know, it's fine though. But I, yeah, it just. Antler could just. Yeah. True. Swipe, learn to swipe it up true. if he doesn't already know. That's by true. watching us, so yeah. I just took the fast passcode off of someone <laughs> else's phone yesterday. Mm. So, all right, what has what's been the most challenging thing about raising a child? Do you want to do like you got to pick one thing? One thing. I mean, it's never one thing, but if you had if you had to go out on a rant right now, because I feel like this is a very ranty episode. Mm-hmm. We're just kind of ranting. <laughs> What's the most difficult thing about raising a child? Mm. It's a hard question, right? I'll go first. Or you? Okay, can, yeah, okay. you no, can. no, I didn't actually think about it. I'm just like, <laughs> I'll just pick something because there's so many. Yeah. But if you thought about it. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's just accepting that I don't have control and that I, I, like, I don't have control over how he experiences life and how he experiences me and how he experiences us and and our other family members and you know just like I don't have control over his journey and his experience and like I'm not supposed to but like as a parent I think this is like this natural like wanting to is like normal Mm -hmm. because you're just you want to protect them and you want them to not experience all of the like chaos that you experienced on whatever level. And yeah, for me, it's like continuously noticing how I want to grasp for control Mm. around his experience and knowing that, that if I allow myself to try to control to that extent, that's not going to be healthy for him either. And so like, I just find myself taking deep breaths and like taking steps back and just like trusting that what he's experiencing is meant for him and like me obviously like staying connected and like being supportive and like knowing when to feel concern and all that is important but like I can't control his experience Hmm. and and I'm not meant to but like I, I am meant to do the inner work to get myself to a place where I can detach from wanting that control that badly does Mm. that make sense yeah i think so yeah and i think most people can especially if you're a parent but i think everyone can relate to being like well you want your kid to have a good time you Mm -hmm. want to be able to control who they're with and how those people talk and what they talk about and Mm -hmm. what they're exposed to and in every at every Mm -hmm. turn Mm -hmm. i mean even you and that yeah I I feel that too. Mm-hmm. I definitely want that too. Yeah. I think the most difficult thing. <laughs> so again, we have a five year old. They don't listen. <laughs> that's, that's the most difficult thing, is that they don't listen. Mm-hmm. Think about for anyone who doesn't have kids. Think about, you know, your if you have a partner. When you tell your partner like to do something or you always tell them like, listen, don't don't leave the light on. And then every day you walk into a room they were just in and there's a light on and you're just like, don't leave the light on. I don't know how many times I have to tell you like you probably get like you get into fights about it. Like there's something that you have that you can place into what I'm saying. And with a kid. They will at least a partner will be like, I'm so sorry. I'll do. It. I'll try to do. It. I just, I just forget. I don't mean to. Of course, why would I mean to? Kids are just like, no. You do it, <laughs> right? Like, 
Oh, and they'll just and then and then you think you think well I'm big and you're little, so I'm gonna make you turn it off, right? And like I'm not like there's no like mm-hmm. nothing totally crazy, but it's like I'm gonna stand here and I, like no, you cannot do this. You cannot leave this room. You're gonna get up and you're gonna go turn that light off right now. And then you try to get more serious. You're like right now, and then you're like I'm getting Bubba. I'm getting very angry, and I, it you know it makes me not want to hang out and like play because you know you're you're not having your listening ears on like you're trying so hard to be like super polite but you're inside you're just like get the fuck up and turn the goddamn light off you know what i mean and there's just something in like there's something animalistic about when you are when you have your own child that you want to tower over them you want them to know that you are the you one know, in control. Yeah, you are the one in control. You are like you're at a, like I'm and I'm gonna make you do it, right? And I know that this happens a lot and I catch myself of like, you know, being like, fine, I'm gonna fucking pick you up and I'm gonna put you in that bed if you're not gonna get into that bed, right? Like and it's just very it's so difficult. When your kid doesn't listen. Right. Well, that that experience lives inside of us too because like that was the norm for our parents. Like that was the right. way to parent. Right. For our parents, for most of our parents in the generation that our parents are in. And right. so like that a lot of the time was how we were handled as a generation. And right. so like that lives inside of us too. Like so there is this part of us that feels like, well, that's how I deal with it. But then at the other on the other side of the um, perspective, like we we also – we know consciously that that's not how we want to deal with it. We know consciously that like, that that's not work. going to be productive right. that like I didn't turn into an awesome <laughs> human being with that conditioning. Like, you know, like it's been me unlearning it that has been supportive and like, you know? Yeah. No. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally get it. But that's like definitely for me, the most difficult yeah. thing. So yeah. he doesn't listen. You're just like, Bob, sit down in your car seat and buckle yourself in sit down what do we do every time we get into the car Mm -hmm. the first thing we do is we sit down Mm -hmm. and we put our car seat in Mm -hmm. and they're just like i just wanna i just wanna let's just one more one more and then you're like okay one more and they do the one more Mm -hmm. and then you're like let's go and they're like one more one more you're like we just did the one more Mm -hmm. like it's so frustrating and extremely difficult Mm -hmm. yeah well like time management as a parent is a whole different world yes like So, like, I feel like you and I struggled with time management before we were parents, like, in a pretty big way. But then, like, adding a child to to the mix, like, like, adding a child to the mix, like, added, like, at least 20 minutes to our already late We were already 15 or 20 minutes late. (laughs) And now we were just, like, an hour late. We're like, we'll be there at three. We get there at quarter to four. But then we got, we got good pretty quick. Yeah. But it got harder when mm -hmm. he got older. Yes. Because, again, you can't put the jacket on him. You're not like, oh, let's put your jacket on, putting it on. It's like, come over here, get your jacket on. And they're like, no. Mm-hmm. And they run away or they run upstairs. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Trying trying to. You put the jacket on, they take it off. On time as a family is so hard because there's it's not just you. Like, you know how to get yourself in the car by 1050. But like then you have to know that everybody else is going to do what they need to do to get in the car at that time. And a child doesn't even know how to tell time a five-year-old. So it's like, and they don't know what five minutes concept of, yeah. He asked me all the time, like how many minutes? And like, I, I wonder if he's starting to have his own way of thinking about the difference between five minutes and 10 minutes. But like, I don't know. I don't think he knows. It's it's interesting. It's just sometimes I'm like, okay, you've got eight minutes left. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know, (laughs) you know? So, I just, that's definitely the most difficult thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Yes. If you have more questions at the end of this episode, you can drop us a question. You could also go to the description box, either on YouTube or Spotify. Click that link. Leave us a question. Um, you can DM us. Yeah. However you want to contact us, we will definitely note your question. We love getting yeah. questions. And it's really fun to have a nice bank and to try to think about what do we want to answer this week? What do we have mm-hmm. stories that help? And so whether you have asked a question already or you haven't, definitely keep them coming. Also, 
we love updates. Remember we yeah. got that one update? Oh, yes. Like, updates. Updates are fun too. So if you've got an update and you've asked a question mm-hmm. in the past, mm-hmm. please let us know. We're still waiting on that wedding invite from that yes. one couple. Exactly. Um, but today is a short, nice video. So mm-hmm. let us know if you like the ranting. If you liked it a little bit uh, more comical, we're using our comedy to overcome our anger, which is fine if you're not hurting anyone. Yeah. Whatever you need to do, yes. you do that. <laughs> if you are on Spotify and you'd like to leave us a review, please do yeah. so. And if you're on YouTube, please go ahead and give this uh, video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. We really appreciate everything. Really excited that we're yeah. at 21 and... Looking forward to another 21 episodes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to have a, a drink to celebrate 21. Oh, yeah. I want to have one on your 40th <laughs> birthday. We're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a, we should record a podcast for your 40th. Yeah. Special I love edition. I love that. All right. Peace Dance out, y'all. Dance party. Bye.